welcome to dynamic coaching center uh, so we were seeing about the staff selection commission previous year past question papers and uh, the continuation of the same so this question has been asked in the year 2012 so which of the following path function quantity okay which of the following is actually a path function quantity so we have seen uh, uh, several kind of these questions uh, uh, in the past question papers also so hope uh, you can now notice down one thing that few of the questions are actually been getting repeated so we have been given with four options option a work done option b pressure option c enthalpy and option d temperature okay so we know that uh, as per thermodynamics uh, the path functions are the one which actually definitely depends upon the path which is been taken between the end states so those quantities are one is heat and next one is work so if you get back to the question option a work done is there so that is the correct answer so we'll move on to the next question so during throttling which thermodynamic property does not change so throttling is a kind of irreversible process and uh, where actually enthalpy as a property will be maintained as constant okay so or i can say that it is an isenthalpic process it's a straightforward question okay so option a entropy option b enthalpy option c internal energy option d pressure has been given the same year it has been asked so throttling is an irreversible process where the opening of the porous plug experiment would have studied during your btec and uh, this throttling process is a one where the enthalpy property is actually maintained as constant so i can say that option b would be the correct answer so we'll move on to the next question the internal energy of a perfect gas depends upon so we have been given with four options so note down this word we have already discussed in the previous video about the perfect gas so internal energy of a perfect gas depends upon option a temperature entropy and specific heat option b temperature only option c temperature pressure and specific heats specific heats are nothing but your cp and cv values specific heat at constant pressure specific heat at constant volume and uh, option d is temperature enthalpy and specific heats okay so we know that internal energy u is a function of temperature only for a perfect gas similarly i can say that enthalpy is also directly proportional to only temperature okay so this is being defined and that is known as joule's law so you can even uh, uh, note down this point also which will help you in the upcoming questions so i can say that option b would be the correct answer let's move on to the next question so during an adiabatic process the pressure p of a fixed mass of an ideal gas changes by del p and its volume v changes by del v then the value of del v by v is given by okay so it's a tricky question so they have uh, give, uh, asked this question in the same year 2012 and they have been given with four options option a 1 by gamma into del p by p option b 1 by gamma cube del p by p option c del p by p option d minus gamma del p by p okay so we'll do some mathematical work over here so let's take for example it has been said in the question that it is just an adiabatic process okay so we have reversible adiabatic and irreversible adiabatic okay so let's take for example reversible adiabatic isentropic which is pv power gamma equal to constant okay so let's take this for an adiabatic process and we'll try to differentiate on both sides okay so here it would be uv rule so if you have two differentiable quantity then you have to keep one as constant and differentiate the another 
then keep this as constant and differentiate the another okay so that rule we are going to employ on the left hand side so which means i am going to keep p as constant and you know x power n differentiation is n into x power n minus 1 the same thing is being going to be used here so it would be gamma v power gamma minus 1 into dv again we need to differentiate this d plus we will keep this v power gamma constant and this time we will differentiate p so it would be dp equal to differentiating constant on the right hand side will give you 0 right so now we will bring this term we will bring this term to other side of the equation because in the question they have asked about del v by v so this is what you need to get or i can say dv by v so this is the term which we are looking for and the corresponding expression has been given as option so it would be p into v power gamma minus 1 just rearranging these terms into gamma dv equal to minus dp v power gamma so we want dv by v which is nothing but your question del v by v so so you have this term p into v power gamma minus 1 into gamma into dv right so i need to bring this term v power gamma to one side of the equation so that i will be getting dv by v right so which would be equal to 1 by gamma into minus dp by So I'll explain you how you are getting this. See, uh, this can be rewritten. So which means this portion alone can be written as p into v power gamma into v power minus 1. This can be further again rewritten as v power gamma divided by v. Because v power minus 1 is nothing but 1 by v. So that is what been written. Okay. So this v power gamma and this v power gamma will get cancelled. This v is there in the denominator and already you have this dv. So dv by v will be there and you can bring this p to the other side of the equation and also this gamma to the other side of the equation so that you will end up with this expression. So the correct answer is option A. So a very important thing. So we'll move on to the next question. So this question was also been asked in the same year 2012 in case of Boyle's law. So we have already seen about Charles law in our previous video. In case of Boyle's law, if the pressure increases by 1 percentage, the percentage decrease in volume is. So we are asking about the percentage decrease. So these words has to be kept in mind while you are working out. So option A, it is 100 by 101 percentage. Option B, 1 by 100 percentage. Option C, 0 percentage. And option D, 1 by 101 percentage. So, we will just write the Boyle's law first. So, according to Boyle's law, at constant temperature, I can say that pressure is inversely proportional to volume. So, I can say that PV equal to constant. So, between the state 1 and state 2, I can write P1, V1 equal to constant. Similarly, for state 2, P2, V2 equal to constant, I can write. So, since the right-hand sides are equal, I can equate the left-hand side. So, P1, V1 equal to P2, V2. So, let me take my initial pressure P1 as P itself and similarly, my initial volume V1 as V itself. So, here in the question, they have said that if the pressure increases by 1 percentage, which means this original pressure is 100 percentage. Now this pressure is being raised by 1 percentage, which means it is 101 percentage. So I can say that my second state pressure is 
101 percentage of the first state pressure or I can say this is 1.01 .01 So they are asking you about the second volume. First volume is kept as P. Okay. So now if you go for this equation, in the left hand side I can simply put PB. On the right hand side instead of P2 I can put 1.01P into V2. So which means I can cancel this pressure on both sides of the equation. So I can say that my V2 would be equal to 1 by 1.01 1 .01 times P. Or I can say even rewrite this as V2 divided by V is 1 by 1.01. .01. So in order to do some slight changes because this is in decimal right. So if you want you can keep this and do. So what I will do is I will just rewrite this expression. Let me show you in the next slide. My V2 by V original volume is 1 by 1.01. Okay. To make it as a whole number. So I will do 1 minus since it is a decimal thing. 1 minus V2 by V. So similarly here also I will put 1 minus 1 by 1.01. So if you do this then I am getting if you just cross multiply and take the LCM then you are getting 0 0.01 by 1.01. So which means it is 1 by 1.01. So now they are asking you about the change in volume by original volume into 100. So which would be 100 by 101 percentage. So I can say that option A would be the correct answer. So be careful about this, uh, this option. So this is not the right thing. Okay because that is not in percentage. Or else you can even do like this. So this is what the final answer you are looking for in percentage. So if you want del V, we can put V2 minus V1. V1 is actually kept as V and original volume V. So then make common as V and then cancel out and then multiply it by 100, you will get the same answer. So now we will move on to the next question. So the expression integral PDV gives the measure of work done during. So they have given four options. So it is from the basic statement of thermodynamics. Question was asked in the subsequent year 2013. Option A steady flow reversible process. Option B non-flow reversible process. Option C open system and any process. Option D any system any process. So this expression integral PDV between the limits 1 to 2, it actually gives a measure of work, no doubt in that. So that is actually valid for non-flow process, which means it is valid for closed system. So it is valid for non-flow and also reversible process. Because all those processes, whatever we deal with thermodynamics, we, we assume it as reversible process, like constant pressure, constant temperature, constant volume, everything. Okay. So it is a non-flow reversible process. So if we just get back to the question, option B is the correct answer, non-flow reversible process. Because they have not mentioned about the closed system. So that is the tricky point here. So we'll move on to the next question. Which property is an intensive property of the system? So we have been given with four options. So option A, specific enthalpy, option B, volume, option C, kinetic energy, and option D, entropy. See, they have asked about the intensive property. There is one more property which is called as extensive property. So extensive property is the one which actually depend upon the extent of the system. 
how far the system how much constraints are there in the system it depends on in such a way that is those properties are called as extensive properties or i can say that something related to mass but this extensive property when it is being divided by mass they become specific property already been explained in the previous uh, videos which you can check it out so for example if i say if i say enthalpy alone it is actually a measurement of energy and that is actually extensive how much molecules are there that much would be the energy but if i divide this enthalpy by mass then it would become specific enthalpy so specific enthalpy see that is what i have written specific property now enthalpy divided by mass will become specific enthalpy now this becomes intensive because intensive is a one which does not depend upon the mass intensive property does not depends upon the mass or i can say that all the specific properties are nothing but intensive properties as they are actually independent of mass so if we just get back to the option so i can say that this kinetic energy is a whole sum of energy it is an extensive property this entropy is also an extensive property volume definitely depends upon the dimension so it is also an extensive property specific so this specific enthalpy is a intensive property so option a is a correct answer so generally you will get questions from extensive and intensive properties point function and path function in most of the je ssc papers so this is one more question one of the extensive properties of a thermodynamic system among the following is so now they have asked about the extensive property option a pressure option b volume option c temperature and option d density see this pressure and temperature uh, uh, are nothing but uh, they are actually intensive properties say for example if you have some container and if i say that the entire container is maintained at 30 degrees celsius even if you split and measure the temperature over here or here it is going to be the same 30 degree which means it does not depend upon the extent so i can say that this is an intensive property clearly the same thing is been applicable for the pressure also similarly for the density also how far the package of uh, atoms or molecules are present uh, uh, per unit volume is nothing but your density but regarding this volume it is definitely an extensive property if you have some 3 cross 2 cross 3 then that uh, that actually confines to some volume if you have 4 cross 2 cross 4 then it is something different so i can say that volume is definitely an extensive property so option b is a correct answer so we'll move on to the next question let's see what has been asked so if two liquids at different temperatures are mixed so there are two liquids they are at different temperatures and they are mixed then the final temperature of the mixture of the liquids can be obtained by using so it is a very simple thing so you have been given with four options option a zero law of thermodynamics option b first law of thermodynamics option c second law of thermodynamics option d third law of thermodynamics and this question has been asked in the year ssc je 2013 okay see first law of thermodynamics can be used to to actually define so or you can say that first law of thermodynamics basically depends upon uh, or uh, basically it is actually from law of conservation of energy so here it is said that uh, there are two different liquids liquid 1 and liquid 2 they both are at different temperatures let's say it is a t1 temperature let this is a t2 temperature now one is going to give the heat and another one is going to gain the heat right now if this partition is been removed they are finally going to settle down at a common temperature and let's assume that temperature as tf so i can say that heat lost by first fluid is equal to the heat gained by second fluid but we assume that there is no heat loss heat is getting transfer only between the fluids so i can say that uh, your heat can be calculated as mcp delta t so it is mcp regarding fluid you have no distinction between cp and cv so you can even use mc delta t 
okay let me use mc delta t equal to again mc delta t so this is nothing but mass of the first liquid specific heat of the first liquid and this delta t would be so let's assume that this is at higher temperature which means it is finally after transferring heat it is going to reach this temperature so which means it is higher temperature minus the lower temperature similarly i can say that for the second fluid it is m2 c2 this is initially at lower temperature and finally after getting the heat from the first fluid it is going to rise and reach the same temperature because both these fluids after exchanging heat they are going to attain the equilibrium equilibrium in the sense temperature going to be same so i can say that it is tf minus t2 so you can use this expression to find out tf suppose if all the other terms are known to you so i can say that this is been possible only because of law of conservation of energy which is nothing but your first law of thermodynamics so let's get back to the options option b would be the correct answer we'll move on to the next question so again this is a same repetition question so in a throttling process the following thermodynamic property remains constant it's a straightforward question enthalpy already we have seen so many times so thank you uh, watch for the entire series of staff selection commission je videos and uh, we'll be publishing both uh, uh, the objective paper 1 and as well as the paper 2 conventional thank you